You're listening to KPFT Houston. 90.1 on your dial. If you're down on the island in Galveston, pick us up at 89.5. And our friends up in the Piney Woods, the Huntsville area, 91.9. It's time for Songwriter Studio. I'm your host, Tom Tranchilla. And it's my pleasure this week to bring you Kathy Lyon. How you doing, Kathy? I'm doing great. It's my first visit to Houston. Yes, it's your first visit to Songwriter Studio. I know that. <laughs> yes, indeed. You've got uh, John in Houston uh, brought your attention to me. And uh, uh, thank you, John. John's in the studio tonight. Well, thank you very much, Tom. And I'd like to say before we get started, if it wasn't for KPFT and shows like Songwriter Studio, where would the independent artist in Houston go? So thank you very much for allowing us in. We really appreciate this. And a big, big thank you to Lloyd Daniel, who's been uh, recording our shows now for the past four, five, six months now since we've been back on the air and allowing us to use the Songbrush Studios. Thank you very much, Lloyd. We love you. Anyway, we've got a, a new artist in the studio, never been on Songwriter Studio before. I mentioned Kathy Lyon. Kathy, it's great to see you. Great to have you in the studio tonight. And... Uh, Brand new album, Nothing But Love. John in Houston sent me this a uh, couple of months ago, and after one listen, I said, boy, this girl can sing. Oh, thank you. Let's schedule an interview. Isn't that right, John? <laughs> yes, sir. Let's talk a little bit about the record. You did some standards, some classics uh, all over the map here, all jazz, that, little jazz blues, yep, yep. some upbeat, some slow, some romantic, Oh yes, and uh, a lot of stuff in between. We're going to be playing as many tracks off of this record as we can, but some of the artists you've got. I know uh, Houston Persons not only produced this, plays some killer saxophone on this album. Oh, yes. He's, Great artist. He's a legend. He is a legend and the sweetest man. Um, I mean, I think he's 86 now, but he is so energetic and fun and funny and, and sweet, and he made the whole process just so lovely. He can still blow the horn, too. Yes, indeed. Lafayette Harris on piano. Mm -hmm. What a great job. I'm telling you. Uh, between him, uh, you got Peter Hand on guitar, Matthew Parrish playing some extremely complex bass parts. Well, to play jazz on bass, you have to know your scales, your, your progressions. He does a killer job. You got Vince Ector on drums. We're going to talk about these artists as the tracks progress. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about your background. Originally from Ralston, Nebraska. You were telling us a little story before we got yeah. on the air. Just outside of Omaha. That's where I grew up. And uh, I have four sisters and a brother at the bottom of the stack. But uh, my sisters and I sang a lot of things like Czech folk songs. And we, we appeared at a Czech festival when I was about nine. So that was a long time ago. But it was... A real spark for me about performing and being on a stage. And you learned how to do four and five part harmony. Oh yeah, we did. We did. Let's talk a little bit about your progression. You uh, started out singing for fun and eventually, uh, go ahead, you tell the story how you get started back <laughs> in the music business again. Well, yeah. I mean, I think at the time I was doing that with my sisters, my mom and dad kind of thought about, well, it, the Lennon sisters were hot. Maybe we should chase this down. But I think they decided that just was a, such a long shot and never really talked about it as a career. And um, I got involved in other things uh, through the years, but uh, never performing again, really. And after I moved to the Washington, D.C. area, DC area um, my future husband was a FedEx driver, and he mentioned he played guitar. And I said, ooh, maybe I could sing a little with you. I used to sing. And... Um, one thing led to another, and we started playing on weekends, and we decided to get married, quit our jobs, and drive our VW bus out to the mountains and go skiing for a season. We thought it'd be just one season. Um, but it kept progressing. <laughs> playing the ski resorts, what a great job. Oh, it was fun. But it was it was kind of brutal. We, you know, gigged in the afternoon at the ski resort and then moved all our gear and played another place at night. We'd do that three or four days in a row and then Holy ski God. the other days. I wouldn't talk those other three days because I was tired. <laughs> yeah, and you got to let your voice rest. Yeah, but it was a great time. we got a lot to talk about, a lot of music. You've got 12 tracks on the new album. New album's entitled Nothing But Love. We've got Candy queued up, track number one. Lloyd back in the booths ready to go. 
Tell us a little bit about uh, your decision to record Candy. Well, it was a song I think I first really got into when I heard Manhattan Transfer doing it. And that was one of the first, um, I, I guess, real influences because I love the vocal work and the harmonies. And, and that's always been a favorite of mine. And that was one of the songs they did. So I always liked it. Um, so when Houston and I were discussing the songs for the album, I, I kind of threw that one into the mix. And I think it was a little different. It wasn't a standard. It wasn't one of the old jazz tunes. And uh, he liked it. And, and that that was, we decided to put that first on the album. Let's listen to that track right now. Track number one, Candy, off the brand new album, Nothing But Love. This is Kathy Lyon. Lion, Candy, brand new album, Nothing But Love. I'll tell you, the uh, quality of the recording is superb. Tell us a little bit about working with Dave. Is it Kowalski? Kowalski, that's that right. That did the uh, engineering, the yeah. mixing, the mastering. He did everything. He did. He just did a beautiful, beautiful job and was so easy to work with. It was so pleasant. Uh, we recorded in the studio. All the songs we recorded pretty much live. You know, everybody was in our sound booths, but it all happened live. I mean, uh, 
I I did over uh, overdub some of the vocals, but essentially the musicians just laid it right Extremely down. Extremely tight for a live recording. Exactly. I was just stunned These and, and very happy. Doing. Well, that the the three guys on there, Peter Hand was an, a guest, but the uh, Lafayette and uh, the other, the drummer and bassist, they work with Houston quite a bit in the New York area. So, so they're basically the uh, go-to studio group Correct. For this studio. Uh, no, no, for Houston. Or, or, okay. Yeah, so they were on the jazz cruise when I've when I've seen Houston on jazz cruises and things like that. They're they're on the. They're used to playing together. Yeah. Okay. Great job. And tell us a little bit about is it T Neck Sound Studios up in New Jersey? Yes, it is. Yeah. And uh, we rehearsed in Manhattan at a rehearsal place, and then. Um, they told me, well, this is in this guy's basement. And I thought, oh, okay. Oh, what a gorgeous studio. The uh, The mixing board was actually used uh, for the production of Thriller. It was the, the board that ended up in the studio. The The owner of the studio, and his name escapes me, but he, he was, uh, I believe he was the drummer for Blood, Sweat, and Tears and had set up this beautiful studio in his basement. And so uh, Houston called in Dave to do the recording, and it was it was a treat. It was just so much fun and and effortless almost. It was that's re very reminiscent to me of the CTI label stuff. That real crystal clear tone, recording tone. Yeah. We're gonna move on. Go to track number three. Then I'll be tired of you. Tell us a little bit about this track. Well, this was a song that uh, Houston introduced me to. Uh, I think I learned about 25 songs for this album. But then we'd reshuffle it and he'd say, well, you know, I've been, I've been thinking about this and let's try these songs. So uh, it was a wonderful learning experience. And that was one of the ones that he introduced me to. And it's, it's just a, a wonderful song. How did you get introduced to Houston, by the way? Well, um, I was involved for a long time when I lived in D.C. with the East Coast Jazz Festival that they had in, um, on the Maryland side. And uh, I would go every year, and I helped as a volunteer. I did graphics. I would sing. And he was one of the headliners that every time he played. And he usually came back every year. It was just the crowd loved him, and I just fell in love with his tone. Very unique sound, I think. And... Um, you know, I was just a fan, basically, and some years later, I got an advertisement for a jazz cruise, and he was the top headliner on it, and I thought, and it was affordable. That was a nice, sweet part about it, and I said, I'm going to go on this jazz cruise and put my self-produced album in his hands, and that was my goal, and when... Uh, after one of his shows, I went up and talked to him, and I mentioned the people that I knew through the East Coast Jazz Festival and that I had taken jazz training, you know, some improvisation training and stuff with Ronnie Wells, who who organized the festival. And he goes, well, you've been doing the right things. You've been hanging with the right people. And so I said, well, I'd like to give you one of my CDs. Well, I'm one of the few people on this ship that has a CD player. I'm going to listen to it tonight. <laughs> and I just about was so excited. And the next day he came up to me and said, I listened to your CD last night. Why aren't you up in New York singing at Birdland? I said, I could be. <laughs> so, And that was, uh, and then he said, we got to talk. We got to talk. And so, you know, he, he said, I, I'd like to talk to you about producing an album for you. And um, that was quite a major um uh, high point in my life <laughs> absolutely and so we we ended up going up there i guess uh he pulled his guys together and we just went up that we we did the whole thing in a week and it was just so that's incredible that effortless quick. and i think that he said well you know we're going to call this nothing but love because this whole session was just so warm and it was just nothing but love so that's where it got the name well let's listen to that track right now then I'll be tired of you. And I'm really uh, featuring Lafayette Harris that does some killer piano on this. Oh, yeah. Especially like Matthew Parrish's bass work on this track. Brand new album, Nothing But Love. This is Kathy Lyon. of you when stars are tired of gleaming when I am tired of dreaming then I'll be tired of you this I know is true 
When winds are tired of blowing, when grass is tired of growing, then I'll be tired of you. Beyond the years, till day is night, till wrong is right, till birds refuse to sing. Beyond the years, the echo of my only love will still be whispering, whispering. If my throbbing heart should ever start repeating that it is tired of beating, then I'll be tired. Lion, brand new music, then I'll be tired of you. Just uh, wonderful piano and bass. Great, great track, excellent recording. You brought Michael Carrasco in with you. He's doing your managing and booking right now. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, hi, Michael. Hi, guys. <laughs> uh, Mike and I have been friends for 40 years, a long time friendship, and he had quite an incredible business career. Um, and uh, he expressed interest in helping me out with the business side of this, and we've been meeting very intensely with John in Houston, and it's been great to get his insights in how, how to proceed and the things we need to research and learn. And so uh, I'm very happy to have him on my team. Thanks for coming <laughs> in. Appreciate it. And John, I don't know how he does it, but uh, every time I turn around, he's sending out a new blast of a new artist he's representing and or promoting. 
and uh, his uh, list of artists is longer than my arm now. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, let's talk a little bit about you. Got some stuff in the can you're about to release. Go ahead, talk right. about that. Right, um, we just came from uh, up in Rio de Janeiro, New Mexico, where we've been recording with uh, Richard Cagle at the uh, Montrose Studios. Oh, yeah. Rich is yeah. a great guy and a great he, artist himself. Yes, and his studio is wonderful, and uh, we get, we've been real, real happy with how the recordings have been going. The interesting thing is that this is really my first... Uh, it's going to be my first release as of my own originals. Uh, that was the one upside of the pandemic. I'll say that, that uh, gave me time for doing the songwriting that I never seemed to have time to do before. And so I really, really knuckled down on it. Over the years, I had written some things, but they were always kind of like an idea that we developed and, and went with. But this was like, I got nothing else on my plate. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get serious about it. And I really wrote some songs I'm very, very proud of. And uh, so we took them out there and, and my vocal parts are done. They're finishing up the tracks. It needs to be mastered and stuff like, you know, mixed and mastered yet. But it's going to be out soon. Do you play piano by any chance? I took piano lessons for years. I, I can hack around at it. I used to play some in my live shows, but I found I wasn't real good at doing two things at once. <laughs> so, Concentrating uh, on the vocal parts. Well, uh, the vocal is so immersive for me. When I'm singing, I, it's hard to be thinking about that, too. And so I just said that's, that's my thing. You can't all be Diana Krall, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the next track we've got selected here. I remember you and Houston Person Sax is just stellar. Uh, it, he's so romantic and so clean and so polished. And I think it really shines in this next track. Oh, Tell us yes. a little bit about how you recorded uh, I Remember You and bringing Houston Persons. What's, is it his idea to feature a lot of sax in this track? Uh, well, sure, because I, I wanted to give him a lot of space on the recording. He was producing it. It was really uh, my privilege to have him on the, on the album. So I wanted to give him a lot of space, and he just blew me away with, with his taste, his, the way he uses space. And he, he's known for his ballads, and he uh, probably kept me from going a little further out in my in my voice in my range but it fit with the way he plays and i i loved that because i'd always admired his style and uh it was a song i had sang before usually as a ballad and he said why don't we swing this and and it was like man it just worked it Pick just it worked yeah you know his style especially when he solos reminds me a little of stanley Turrentine, mm -hmm. who's probably one of my favorite sax players of all time unfortunately passed away mm -hmm. but uh yeah he's he's terrific let's listen to that track right now brand new music kathy lyon i remember you You're the one who made my dreams come true A few kisses ago I remember you You're the one who said I love you too I do, didn't you know Green out of the blue When my life is through And the angels ask me to recall The thrill of it all Then I shall tell them
set go I remembered you You're the one who said I love you too Didn't you know is through and the angels ask me to recall the thrill of it all then I shall tell them I remember I will tell them I remember I will tell them I remember Kathy Lyon, I remember you. Schwarzinger and Johnny Mercer penned. Yeah, that's been a while back. Beautiful song and uh, stellar sax playing. Oh, yeah. My compliments. I, I, I stated this earlier, and I'll state it again. The recording quality is, is just superb. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, I read in your bio about you. Uh, it, of course, you've played many jazz festivals, but touring with the Ricky Loza Jazz uh, down in El Salvador and Guatemala back in the early 2000s. That's Tell us right. how that happened and what was it like? Well, Ricky was kind of the go-to percussionist drummer. His favorite instrument was the timbales. He was so, so wonderful. And um, he was one of the key people at that East Coast Jazz Festival that I was involved with for, for a number of years. And we got to be good friends. And he... Uh, he usually every year had a set where he had a full uh, Latin big band, Latin jazz big band. And, oh, I loved it. And he, uh, after we kind of got to be friends, he said, well, I want you to sing with my big band. And I thought, wow. And so... Twist I, my arm, Oh, right? yeah, exactly. And so uh, I had that amazing experience. And then um, then he told me, well, every year that he and uh, David Marsh, his, his bass player, would take a group down to El Salvador, which was his home country, and uh, present concerts there and up into Guatemala. So he wanted to know if I'd come. And I said, well, yeah. And so I, I did that, and it, it was wonderful. I had no idea of the status that he had uh, in El Salvador as an artist. It was, you know, just a wonderful People loved him, and and the tour was was wonderful. And so then the next year when it came up again, he asked if I'd go, and sure I will. And he and and David went down there, you know, a few days before the rest of the group got down there, and uh, he he died suddenly. So we oh my it was like what happens now? And so we brought in a wonderful uh, uh, drummer, uh, Ronnie Shaw, from that was a Washington D.C. area. Uh, drummer and he he filled those shoes but it became kind of a tribute tour and we we played a lot of the songs and people were telling about how it, people were filing by his casket down there for hours because he was really well known and and I got a really nice write up uh, in the papers down there which of course was all in a different language so I'm never really quite sure what that but what an experience oh it was an amazing experience uh, I, I love to travel I'm a road hog when I'm in the country. And so seeing places in the world were, ju were just wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah. Great story. Let's talk a little bit about the next track we've got queued up, Come Rain or Come Shine. Oh, what a classic song. This has been recorded by many people. We yes. talked about it before the show, including Ray Charles. Right. Uh, tell, tell us why you decided to record this track. Of course, this is, an, this is a, a Arlen and, again, Johnny Mercer. Right. And, and has been recorded many, many times yes. over the decades. 
I love your version. Well, I, I I love to sing blues. I'm a blues singer as well as a jazz singer, and um, this song had that it has that gutsy bluesy thing that I love to do, and so uh, it was just another one of the songs that we we threw in the mix. And Houston and I were talking back and forth on the phone, and and that one made it made the final cut. Just yeah, and he was two I thumbs loved. up about recording this. I'm sure. Oh yeah, definitely. Let's throw this back to Lloyd. Let's get this queued up. Come rain or come shine. Brand new music. Kathy Lyon. I'm gonna love you Like nobody's loved you Come rain High as a mountain, deep as a river, come rain or come shine. I guess when you met me, it was just one of those things. But don't ever bet me. Like nobody's loved me Come rain or come shine Happy together Unhappy together And won't it be fine Days may be cloudy or sunny Nobody's loved me Come rain or come shine Happy together Unhappy together And won't it be fine Days may be cloudy or sunny Shine, rain or shine. 
Kathy Lyon, Come Rain or Come Shine, originally written for the musical St. Louis Woman, Harold Arlen, Johnny Mercer. What a great track, and I really like the fact that y'all decided, I'm sure uh, Houston Persons had a lot to do with the solos. Great sax work, Lafayette Harris's piano work, and definitely Matthew Parrish on the bass. Just wonderful, wonderful work. Well, just sitting here and listening to it again, it's like uh, one of the, the moments that would come after we'd record. Everybody's in their booth, you know, and Houston would step out of his and say, that's all right. <laughs> and I just, that was like everybody knew they we nailed it. <laughs> I agree, 100%. If you're just tuning in, we've got Kathy Lyon in. We're presenting songs from her new album, Nothing But Love. Uh, you're passing through town. We're going to be airing this on the next show. So please, if you like what you hear, we're, uh, we've been on the air for 52 years. Darn near here in Houston, KPFT Songwriters Studio has been on the air here for 15 years. So we really appreciate it. If you like what you hear, go into our website, kpft.org. Hit that tip jar. Donate some money to the station. Keep us on the air for another 50 years. Okay, uh, let's move on. We've got uh, This Time the Dream's on Me, another great track featuring Houston Persons. Tell us a little bit about your choice of recording this track. Well, I loved the, the tempo and the, the um, range of it. it. It's like it's kind of an exercise in jumping around all over. The, the, uh, the melody is, is, is a challenge, but it was so much fun to sing and I feel like we we did a great job on it, and again, this is a song that uh, um, Houston introduced me to, and uh, he w he was digging around in the in the old archives. I could tell, finding songs that that would fit me and his style as well, and uh, this this is a really fun fun song. Let's listen to that track right now. The name of the new album, Nothing But Love. This is Kathy Lyon. This time, the dreams on me. Together, wait and see. Oh, by the way, this time the dream's on me. You take my hand and you look at me adoringly. But as things stand, this time the dream's on me. It would be fun to be certain that I'm the one to know that I at least. Supply the shoulder you cry upon To see you through Till you're everything you want to be It can't be true This time the dream's on me Thank you. 
be close together, wait and see. Oh, by the way, this time the dreams of me. You take my hand and you look at me adoringly. But that's things stay. This time the dreams on me. It would be fun to be certain that I'm the one. Kathy Lyon, this time the dream's on me. The name of the new album, Nothing But Love. That's one of my favorite tracks off the record. Good, upbeat, uh, Houston person's sax work is solid, real solid in this track. If they want to order one of your albums, I know you have several out on the market. Where do they go? Do you have a website? I do. It's um, Kathy Lyon, no S, so it's Kathy with a K, K-A-T-H-Y, L-Y-O-N, music.com. While we're on that, I made the mistake of Googling Kathy Lyons. I know. Trying to get your bio and couldn't find you because there's so many Kathy Lyonses out there. No S. No S. It pops right up. Kathy Lyon Music. <laughs> Correct. And uh, they right. can order, check out your catalog, see what you got available. And are you uh, on any of the streaming services? Um, yes, I'm on, you know, uh, Amazon and Apple Music and, and basically the I think, you know, there's others, but I, I, I'm not totally sure. Google your name and they can find it. Yes, Everything's absolutely. available on the internet now. Exactly. <laughs> and, of course, John is certainly helping me get my name and my music out there. And I, John's the I, man. He is the He's man. He's the promoter. <laughs> and his, his blasts are excellent. I like just reading them. Yeah, absolutely. So we're, uh, we're moving on. We're going to move on to the next track on the record. We're going to go ahead and jump up to track number nine. This is sort of a almost borderline blues tune, Once in a While. Tell us a little bit about this track. Uh, again, I think it was one of the ones in the mix that uh, that Houston introduced me to, and I learned it and loved it, and it, it made the cut. And uh, just, you're right, it's got that bluesy feel that I love in that kind of understated way that Houston does it. Uh, and I was delighted with how it turned out, and it, it, it's a very cool song. Let's listen to that track right now. Once in a while, Kathy Lyon. Try to give one little thought to me Though someone else may be Near your heart Once in a while Will you dream
that spark may burn again I know that I'll be contented with yesterday's memory Kathy Lyons, Nothing But Love, the name of the new album. What a wonderful track, Once in a While. We were talking while that was going on. John was saying just how romantic this album is. <laughs> that it is. So true. And For Peter those, Hammond's uh, guitar work on that. Oh, always just stellar. Lovely. lovely. Stellar. And some of uh, his guitar work, especially the next track I've got picked out here, he sounds uh, a little bit like Wes Montgomery. Yeah. He's got it's that just sound. got that, that three-note uh, triad touch. He's just really, really clean. You know, we're running low on time, and there's one more subject I wanted to talk about. You've done some USO tours. That's right. Um, Tell us how, how that evolved, and uh, go ahead. I'm going <laughs> to let you take it from Well, there. it's kind of funny. Uh, we had, um, after the season that my husband Tom and I had uh, played for the uh, ski resorts and that stuff out west, we were on our way back to Washington, D.C., figuring we were going to go back and get our jobs back and all that. And then we got a call to um, to do a, a little gig up at uh, Grand Forks, North Dakota Air Force Base. And I thought, oh, gosh, I wonder what that'll be like. And we had a blast, two weeks playing in the officers' club. And we just had so much fun the whole time. So on the way back from there, we thought, well, I wonder, I wonder if there's any more places we could play like that. And so back before even voicemail or email or websites or anything, uh, we called the Pentagon and said, who would we talk to about this? And for about an hour and a half, it got transferred around to different different desks, and we finally got the, the right place. And they said, well, send us a cassette and a picture. And um, my husband said, well, why don't we just come to your office? So we did, and we went, and we stood right in the middle of the office, and he played his acoustic guitar, and I sang a couple songs, and we got booked for our our first USO tour, and it was to Germany and Iceland, and uh, it was amazing. It was a six-week tour, and we just had a wonderful time. We we were working as a duo, so a lot of the big bases, they get like big bands come in, but the little, you know, hole-in-the-wall bases never got anything, and so they said, well, a duo, we can send you out to those places, and it was just so appreciated and wonderful, and so when we got back, I turned in all my after-action reports, and said, we'd like to do more of those. And they said, well, only 5% of the groups we send ever get to do another tour. Well, okay. Well, about a month later, they called us and said, well, we had a group. They don't have their passports together. We're just running out of time. Would there be any way that in November into December, you could do a four-week tour to the Caribbean and Puerto Rico and uh, Panama? I was like, yeah, we could do that. So we ended up doing a total of seven overseas tours that's fantastic. so we got three times to the far east and down to australia and it was just always what an experience it was an amazing experience and doing uh, what you love doing what we loved and that was that was like i know what i was meant to do now for sure and it was just and every now and then i still hear from people that saw us on those tours um that they remember us and want to know how it's going and all that so so that was very cool that was very cool if you're just tuning in, Kathy Lyon has been our guest tonight on Songwriter Studio, and thank you so much. Thank you, John, for bringing her in. You're welcome. Okay. I would like you to give your uh, contact information and or website address. Mm -hmm. If they want to order an album, where do they go? Well, go to uh, my website is kathylyonmusic.com. No S on the lions. They can also email me at kathylyonmusic at gmail.com or contact Mike. Mike, thanks for hanging with us tonight. Appreciate you bringing her in, and John, the same. Thank Please you. Please stick around. Uh, thank you for joining us in Songwriter Studio. My pleasure. And then next week, we will be featuring Rusty Gear on Songwriter Studio. Hang around. Now, up next, we have Irish Airs, and after that, our friends from the Bluegrass Depot, Joanna and Dalton, will come in and do three hours of great bluegrass music. 
Again, if you like what you hear, if you want to keep this station on the air and keep Songwriter Studio alive and well, go to kpft.org and hit that tip jar. One more thank you, big thank you to Lloyd Daniel for bringing us uh, into his studio every week to record these shows. Thank Lloyd. We'll see you next week, Songwriter Studio.